All right, a real quick review. First, we talked about the grip, finger tip, or ring finger, middle finger, curled, thumb down. I've got my air pocket right here. Pressure on my index finger right here to where I can't move it. Remember, if you've got a little bit of soreness there and you're trying to master this, put it here. But it's right there curled on the side, and there's my grip. Wrist snap that we talked about, remember that doorknob. Those of you who have got big brothers that chase you, get in front of that door, work on getting through that doorknob. Just remember, when you're practicing that doorknob, if you're opening the door, you're making a pulling action here. We're not wanting any pulling back on that ball. We're just wanting the wrist snap. The thumb's being thrown down to the ground, and that pinky finger is leading the wrist snap to where it cannot go anymore, and you're feeling all of your muscles in your forearm work. Just a little note. A lot of college pitchers that you see that are good rise ball pitchers, if you had them hold up both their arms, they'd have one arm that looked like a Popeye arm and one slender arm here. It's been a long time since I've been throwing collegiate games. I'm now in the coaching side of it, so my arms aren't that different and you really can't notice it. But you will see that difference there. The next thing that we talked about is that we're not coming off that power line at this point in time. We'll discuss that in a moment about inside and outside rise balls. We're staying on that power line driving out as hard as we can and planning farther or taking a longer stride than what our normal fastball pitch or even more opposite than what the drop ball is. So we're taking that longer stride. We did talk a little bit or I did bring a little bit of the body angle in, but body angle is something that I'll speak to you in great depth about lots of different pitches. That body angle is after we've taken that long stride here, okay, and we've gotten past our normal and we're still on that power line. Our body angle is not on top of but underneath of the ball and we're coming with the bending of our knee under the ball with the wrist snap right at that point of release. Now we haven't even covered the point of release but I want you to understand it's my belief that you've got about a five to seven inch box from front to here and about a five to six inch box right here that you have to accomplish that wrist snap, snap or getting through that door in order to even have a chance to get it into the strike zone. Okay, so you've got that release point right in here that you're going through that doorknob right there by the hip. So we've covered grip, we've covered body angle, we've covered stride, we've covered wrist snap. Now let's put that all together, okay? When we come back, you want to make sure you've got your normal motion, you're nice and easy, everything is fluid and easy, and you're coming out and snapping up. Once you've covered and put that all together, there's a whole other avenue that we can start doing, and we can start playing with inside and outside. Remember, we've talked about one thing that hitting and pitching coaches will agree on. The thing for a pitcher or a catcher, or excuse me, a pitcher or a hitter to have to do to be successful is to be able to play or identify with the location inside, outside, and when it's coming to you to hit. Now, if I can throw a rise ball that changes planes, that is already going to make it difficult for that hitter, and now throw it inside and outside, I'm taking my game one step farther. In doing that, remember that power line that I've talked to you about. You're right here. The only thing that is going to change, and I'm going to bring this up on a drop ball later and I bring it up on any pitch that I'm talking about in order for it to go inside or outside, is where you step on that power line. My simple philosophy is keep it simple. I'm not telling you to throw your hips out or change your wrist snap or change any of that. The only thing we're going to change is our stride foot. So if I'm a right-handed pitcher throwing a right-handed batter and I'm wanting an outside rise ball, I'm going to step about anywhere from one to three inches off that original power line and finish everything the same coming right back through. For every inch I change off my power line in that 40 to 43 if, uh, foot distance, it's going to bring that ball that much farther out. Remember, home plate 17 inches and we got to hit the black in order to get a called strike. So by moving that foot off for an outside pitch to here, just off the power line, that'll make the ball for a rise ball go inside. Okay, The outside rise ball, in my opinion, is a harder one to do because you tend to want to throw the body out and use shoulder rotation as opposed to everything the same and just where you plant the foot. Now, obviously, if that's the outside, what am I going to tell you for the inside? If this is my power line, I'm coming one to two inches right here and throwing an inside rise ball. Everything is the same other than where I step. So that gives you something to work on once you've started to master the rise ball of bringing it inside and outside. Let's just take it one step farther and a little secret that made me pretty successful in college using it. What I learned to do is as I started playing with a rise ball is I wanted to try to maximize my rotation and even learn how to throw a rise ball that started maybe here and rose to here. 
Now, remember, we're already talking about getting from point A to point B. To do that, I had to learn how to get even lower without dragging my knuckles on the ground to get that low rise ball to happen. What I'm going to tell you I did, and through instruction from Margie Wright at Fresno State, it was something that we played with. One of those things like I challenge you to come up with maybe your new grip that we started playing with that I experienced a lot of success with. As I stride out and I come as far as I can staying on balance, what I learned is that I came down through here at my release point, I used my stomach muscles, of which you should do anyways, and I pushed back under the ball. So as I'm driving out, I came and I pushed back to get back under the ball, maximize my rotation, and lower my body. Now, when you first start it, it feels really strange. It took a lot of trial and a lot of air for me to be able to really learn the timing process because I'm driving out as hard as I can, I'm wrist snapping, and now I'm going up underneath the ball or pushing back under it to maximize that rotation. One thing I want to make really clear, your stomach muscles, if they're not in shape now, if you want to be a good rise ball the pitcher, they need to get in shape and they will become in shape because on that release and when you're pushing, back through here, you're going to feel your stomach muscles pulling or pushing back as if you just finished a back bend that you used to do all the time when you were a young girl. So all that in review, a few extra things for you to work on should get you to that next level and play even more games with the batter and that's what we want to accomplish.